Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. As promised yesterday, we're going to do the, the next brew dog. This is their Tokyo. This is an 18.2 percenter. Uh, IBUs on this is 90. So the IBUs, the bigger the beer, the more IBUs it takes to balance that beer out. Uh, yesterday's uh, beer was only 10 percent and the IBUs were up into the 80s. And this one is at 90 and 18.2 percent. Uh, brew dogs out of Scotland. Uh, this is a pricey beer. Well, considering it's 18.2 percent and 13 dollars a bottle, it's, it's actually not too pricey because a lot of the 18 percenters, even the ones from Avery and other other people that do these monster beers, are a little on the pricey side. Uh, yesterday's beer was the same price as this one, and it was only 10 percent, and that and that cost them a grade or two. Because of the priciness of the beer, uh, and and and, I, and a lot of people say, well, you shouldn't judge the price of the beer about the quality of the beer. And they, yeah, that's my review. I do what the hell I want to fucking do. Uh, I don't consider thirteen dollars a bottle for a ten percenter. It doesn't blow my hair back or my socks off to be a great buy. If it had been five, six, or seven dollars, it may have been a different story. But at ten percent, it didn't blow my hair back or my socks off, and it was a very pricey beer. So we'll, we'll find out. I'm hoping this is going to be a lot better. Or, or for the ABV, it's not going to be super boozy. And it's going to be worth the $13 that I paid for this bottle. And that has an effect. And on this one, uh, the date on this one, it says batch number 417. Which their site doesn't tell you a damn thing about when the batches are done. And best before 1024 of the year. 2024. That's nine years from now. Ah, and I believe that. Uh, this is an 18% beer. This beer will keep 10, 15, 20 years if you sell it correctly. So, I mean, this can be put away. And it doesn't mention anything about any coffee. Malt beverage brewed with cranberries and jasmine. I'm not a big cranberry fan. The other half is. She loves cranberries. I'm not a big cranberry fan. Also, like I said, they're out of Scotland, 18.2% uh, flavored malt liquor on the, on the label here. Uh -huh. well, malt liquor, everybody knows what the malt liquor is for. It's for, the, it's for the young crowd that want to pay 2 or $3 for a big 40 ounce of, of malt liquor that they can get shit based on. That's basically what malt liquor is produced for. So you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get your buzz on. And that's basically what malt liquor is made for. Coke 45, Steel Reserve, all the rest of these malt liquors, they're usually 8% or, or, or above in the ABV, and they don't cost a whole lot. There's not a lot of flavor in there. They're very sweet, very grassy, very grainy, not what I want to drink. Uh, if I was 20 years old, maybe a different story. But may want to get shit faced and pass out and get my buzz on, but I don't do that anymore, guys. I, I'm in for the taste of the beer, not the effect of the beer. So, got a kind of feeling this is not bourbon, it's just Cascade. Uh, Intergalactic Fantastic Oak Aged Stout. So, they have aged this in, in, in some kind of oak cask. So, we'll see what this one brings. I'm not holding any judgment. I'm hoping it's going to blow me away. I really, really am. For $13 a bottle, I hope it blows all my clothes off, to be honest about it. All right, uh, let's go over to the food pairings for this one. It's going to be your typical uh, uh, 
uh, Imperial Stouts. It says the cheese of the buttery brie go to Havarti Swiss, and it is a stout, so it goes well with your chocolate dishes, and it, is a, it can be used as a digestive either before dinner, during dinner, or after dinner. Uh, the meat for this is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat, glass fried becker, nonic, tumbler, snifter, oversized wine glass. I brought out the double glass for this one today, guys, and it can be sellered for years and years and years to come at 18.2%. Uh, commercial description on this beer says here intergalactic fantastic oak eight stout the irony of excellentism the priority of being and the inherent contradictions of postmodernism all, all all so delicately converted conveyed by the blocky pixelated arcade action have all been painstakingly recreated in this bottle's contents a lot of big words there guys <laughs> this imperial stout is brewed with copious amounts of specialty malts, jasmine, and cranberries. After fermentation, we then dry hop this killer stout with a bucket load of our favorite hops before carefully aging this beer on French toast and oak chips. I wish they would tell me here what hops they did use. They do not. Now, if you go to their website, they probably do. It is all about moderation. Everything in moderation, including moderation itself, what logically follows is that you must, from time, have excess. This beer is for those times. Excess. Uh, and it says the same thing over here on Beer Advocate about it. So I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. So let's pop the cap on this high dollar beer from Scotland and see what it's about. Now this cap that we did yesterday was black and has their little logo on it and the cap today is white with their red logo on it so let's get this into the glass and see what we got down the center on an 18 percenter looks rather red and uh, ruby color coming out of the bottle a little bit lighter than the one I poured yesterday over into the light. I'm not getting a whole lot of light even around the edges, but it did pour uh, a little lighter colored than the 10 percenter, which is kind of odd to me. I would figure this would be a lot darker since I used uh, a lot more malt and a darker malt on top of that, but it poured kind of red rubyish out of it, but in the glass I'm not getting it. Now if I had some kind of, if I had used the uh, Sauvignon beer glass, it would have had some red ruby tinges in the little thin part. But going through the thick part of the glass here, I'm not getting any of that. It looks uh, pretty dark in the glass. So. And it didn't pour a very big head. And uh, it's going to probably dissipate pretty quickly, just like the one did yesterday. So let's get a nose on this. I am getting the fruitiness of the cranberries in this one. It does have that sweet smell, but I'm getting a little more fruitiness with the uh, with the cranberries used and the, the jasmine. I don't know what what smell the jasmine would would lend to a beer, but it's got a lot of rich caramely, toppy, uh, burnt malt smell to me. Maybe some hint of some dark fruit in there. Maybe raisins or plums or, or dates or something like that. Not getting any coffee. There is a slight bit of alcohol, but not to what I would expect an 18.2% per would, would, would give off. So, probably a very well-made beer. I would say it probably is. Well, let's give it a taste. The head is dissipated. Just barely covering the top of the beer. Cheers, everybody. It's tasty. Just a slight hint. It's not boozy. Just a slight hint of a little bit more alcohol than the 10%er had yesterday. Very sweet taste to it. And the, and the jasmine is coming out a little more in the taste than in the smell.
I put them on the floury. But this is very tasty. There's no bourbon involved. A little bit of the oak, which lends a slight hint of the vanilla. But it's not overpowering. I mean, I don't think it stayed in the oak cast very long. I like this one a little bit better than the one I did yesterday. I will be truthful with you. And, and mainly because it is a well-made beer and it's 18%. 18.2% as a matter of fact. It has a nice sweetness to it. There is, I'm not getting any coffee. Slight hint of the woody oak taste. The very rich burnt caramel malty taste to it. And just a slight increase in the heat from the from the alcohol on this one, but nothing that's burning the throat or anything. Now at eighteen point two percent, you could, I can almost justify the, the thirteen dollars a bottle instead of the ten percent at thirteen dollars a bottle. So this is more in the line of 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 a, a, a higher price beer should be, and not a ten percent. But the 18%, I can see paying that price, especially since it's coming from Scotland and there's some transportation costs in there. But if it had been bourbon barrel aged beer, I would probably be flipping over backwards here and, and, and be ecstatic about it. But it's right out of the fridge at 40 degrees. So let's let this warm up like we need to on all these stouts like this, especially a Russian Imperial stout. And especially at 18%, it needs to come up to room temperature to get an accurate taste and, and, and aroma of what it's going to be. And a lot of the beer reviewers, uh, my, my good friend Dave that does beer sampling with Dave, he doesn't, he doesn't, he takes his beers, especially these kind of beers, out of the fridge and does them at room temperature. And I always end up at room temperature, but I like to pour it, pour it chilled and taste it chilled before I uh, come back and do the... Uh, final chug and grade at, at room temperature. It's just me. That's just my OCD. It's just the way I like to do it. And, and, and that's the way he likes to do it. And by golly, more power to it. However you like to drink your beer. If you don't want to put it in the refrigerator at all, you want to get it off the shelf and, and take it home and pour it in the glass, by golly, do it. That's, I mean, whatever whatever makes you happy and blows your hair back and, and, yeah, and, and the way you like to do it, that's the way you need to do it. Don't let anybody else tell you how to do it. So let's uh, let's take this back and uh, sip on a little bit and let her have a sip or two and see what she thinks and uh, we'll come back and do the final chug great on this one. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. The other half loved it. She did. She she, she liked this one a little bit better than the the ten percenter. I told her what both of them cost because she wasn't there when I bought them, and they were both thirteen dollars a bottle. And I can justify the price on this beer being an 18.2% over the 10%er uh, and both of them being the same price bottle. I don't understand that. Uh, I know there's some transportation costs involved in that, but still. <laughs> if they were producing a 5%er, would it be $13 a bottle just because it comes from Scotland? I don't know. I don't know. And they don't tell me on their website what batch number corresponds with the bottling date. And on this, 18.2%, it's basically irrelevant. Uh, but I would like to see them put a year on it. I mean, at least you'll know when it was put in the bottle. And, and I like to see that, especially on this style of beer. I mean, put that on the label. I mean, you're charging $13 a bottle. Why can't you afford to be able to put the year on the label? I don't understand that. So thumbs down to Brew Dog for that. Two thumbs down for that. Having enjoyed by 2024, just don't cut it in my opinion. Uh, another beer, anybody with any common sense that's into craft beers knows that an 18.2% beer is going to keep for 10, 15, even 20 years 
if you sell her correctly. So uh, uh, the best the best enjoy by date is garbage to me. Uh, I'd, I'd much rather see the bottle on date or at least a year. Put the year on there. We put this in the bottle in 2014, 2015, 2012, 20, 2005, or whatever the case may be. Rudolph is big enough now that they can do that, and they choose not to. So, that's all I'm going to say about this. Let's do the final chug. Awesome, awesome beer. Very well made beer. I'm not a cranberry fan. They've used cranber cranberries and juniper on this beer. It is still awesome. It is delicious. It is awesome. The only way this beer could be better is to be put into bourbon barrels instead of just oak barrels. Oak barrels is fine. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. You get some nice woodiness and some vanilla out of that. And I did on this. I got that. And the cranberries are kind of subdued. It does have a nice floral taste to it from the, the, the juniper berries that they've used on this. So the guys at BrewDog do a, a great job. They really do. Kind of pricey over here in the States. And I understand that. And I'm willing to pay $13 a bottle for an 18.2% beer. I, I am. I really am. Because I know it's, it's a special treat. I'm not drinking this every day. I'm not buying a six-pack of this or four-pack, however it's produced. I don't know how they ship it out. I do not have a clue. do not care. But as far as uh, the craft beer drinkers, not a lot of us buy these type of beers in, in either four-packs or six-packs or even by the case. Imagine what a case of this would cost at $13 a bottle. I don't have them kind of deep pockets. And I don't think a lot of other people do either. I may be mistaken, but I would not, I would not indulge in in, in buying uh, either a 12, 12 pack or a twenty four pack. I read they, a lot of people consider a twenty four pack a case, and a lot of them consider a twelve a twelve pack a case. That's how it's produced, and uh, and, and I don't want this to be a a real long exaggerated beer review, guys, but. I just want to stress that this is a pricey beer, and it's an 18.2 percenter, and it's probably worth $13 a bottle. But we need a little more information on the bottle, like when it was put in the bottle, not when you think we should drink it by. Let us make that decision, because we know that an 18.2 percent is going to keep for 5, 10, 15, even 20 years if you sell it correctly. We, we, we know that. We know that. So... Just a little help from you guys would go a long way, especially if you want us to fork out $13 a bottle for your beers. So, with that being said, I think it's an awesome beer. It's a very well made, very nice tasting beer. And with the, the cranberries, which I'm not a fan of, like I said, and the, the juniper that's done with the spear, it all comes together very well. And I would love to sell her one of these for at least 10 years and, and re-review it. So, but how am I supposed to know if I don't have a bottle on date if it's 10 years old? Uh, we got a batch number and it's best by 2024, but when the frick was it put in the bottle? Come on, step up to the plate. You're big enough to do this. You're probably the biggest brewery in Scotland, especially on these style of beers anyway. But that's enough of that. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Of, I'm uh, through ranting. Through ranting. So, with that being said, if I can get all the tablets to work here, let me go back to this and go back to that. Electronics. Got to love them. Uh, Beer Advocate says it's 88 in the very good range, and Rate Beer says 99 overall and 85 in the style. I think it's a tad better than the one I had yesterday, just because. It's an 18 percenter, and I paid thirteen dollars a bottle for it. I'm gonna give this a nine out of ten. It, it is that good, guys. If you get a chance, or you see this beer, you might want to try it. You might want to. You might want to give it a taste. But just remember, it's a pricey beer. I don't know if I would buy another one without having the at least a year that it was put in the bottle on it again. But 
They do some awesome beers. They really, really do. So, Brewdog, thumbs up for the, the work that you do, but thumbs down on not putting the year on this style of beer. Uh, we'll make our own decisions, put the year on it, and we'll drink it when we damn well please. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? Can you hear me now? All right. Uh, 88, like I said, from Beer Advocate, 99 from this. 9 out of 10 for me on this one, guys. If you've had the Tokyo, especially this version, because I think I did other versions of this, this is the 18.2 percenter. Very tasty. Give us some more info, guys. I like you. I like you a lot. Your beers are expensive over here, though. All right, guys. If you've had this one from, uh, from BrewDog, they're, they're Tokyo, 18.2 percent. Let me know what you think. This ranting shit gets my heart heart rate up and blood pressure up and all this kind of stuff. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> Alright guys, come on back tomorrow. We're going to see what's in the fridge. Maybe we can find one that's got a bottle on date on it. I sure hope so. We'll see you then.